at the Shasta Pinnacles State Park. The park is closed, but this is just a little walk up into the parking lot. Beautiful view of the Pinnacles. I'm going to set up here and do a quick oil painting. I'm on a little road trip to the dry side of the Cascades in the Wenatchee Leavenworth area. Beautiful rocky dry area. Dry compared to the western side where I live and where I normally paint. I found this little state park on my Google Maps and it looked pretty interesting. I've been wanting to paint some desert scenes, some rocks, and this is kind of close to home, so I thought I'd give it a try. What's drawn me to this scene is the sunlight on those really cool shapes on those neat rocks up there. They're all kind of slanted in that one direction. They have sharp jagged points and lots of cool shadows. I also like the way the path down in the foreground is kind of leading to the park. So this is roughly the scene I'm going to paint. I'll play with the composition a little bit on my phone and decide how much I want to tackle. I'm probably going to keep the foreground pretty abstract, pretty rough. Just suggest that path and the green gate and the tree beside the gate. Just very rough and decide later how much I want to include. I'm going to go with a 9 by 12 panel. It's a decent sized panel but not as big as I could go since I'm so close to the car. I may come back again another time. There's a lot of different viewpoints, a lot of different views here and I'd like to come back another time and hike up into the park and up onto those rocks. I've been noticing people walking their dogs going on into the park so I don't think they pay too much attention to the fact that there's a sign next to the parking lot saying that the, the park is closed so I would probably be fine hiking up and around there but I actually just want to do a quick painting and then get on to my next location closer to Leavenworth. A beautiful view that way as well. There's rocks climbing up that slope. And this way as well. It'll be interesting to see how the light changes as the sun sets. It's almost three o'clock. It's early March so the days are getting longer but I would expect the light's going to change pretty quickly here in the next couple hours. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Quick rundown on the palette. I've got Artist Turpentine here. This is Richeson's Rectified Turpentine. A little bit of liquid in here. I'll put the turpentine away after I get the, the turpentine washed and I'll switch to Gamsol. I don't like to breathe these turpentine fumes any more than I have to, but I do like to use turpentine outside. Ivory Black, Rembrandt Cold Gray, Titanium White, Cerulean Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Sap Green, Transparent Oxide Brown, Burnt Sienna, Lizard Crimson, Cad Red, Cad Yellow. This is Gamblin Radiant Lemon and yellow ochre. I'll start by sketching the composition on my panel. This is a Gorilla Painter oil primed linen panel. I get those from Judson's discount art supplier. They seem like really nice quality panels. They're fun to paint on. Really reasonable price for linen. And great for practice. So I'm going to do something like this. I may zoom in a little bit tighter. Have the those peaks, those pinnacles take up more of the composition. But I do want to capture that little bit of a trail down at the bottom leading into the, the composition. So start with a small bristle brush and just sketch the scene. I'll use a couple different colors just so I can 
kind of map out where I want things to go and then I'll move into the turpentine wash. There's the sketch and I tried to block in some of the major darks, some of the shadows. I've been thinking about no tan lately. It's a Japanese word that basically means light dark harmony. And one of the old precepts of that is to connect all your darks and to also have an, a random scattering of darks. Try not to repeat a pattern unless the pattern is really important to the composition. And also to have a, an imbalance, more dark or more light, but not 50-50. So in this scene, I'm gonna push things toward the higher key and have more light than dark. And you can see here, I've tried to connect all the shadows. There's kind of a squiggly line that runs up here along the crest, mapping out the shadows. And then back down here, these rocks in the hillside, mapping out the shadows, and then the fence line and the path down below. And so this, this tail end is a little disconnected. This tail end is a little disconnected, but I can connect it roughly with this tree coming up and same thing over here I can use this tree to connect this lower shadow pattern with the upper shadow pattern. So now I'll go into the turpentine wash and try not to lose that composition that I've captured. With the turpentine wash, I'll use a little bit of ultramarine for the sky. I may map out some of those beautiful clouds with lizard and crimson while I'm at it and wipe away the white of the clouds. For the pinnacles, I'll use a little bit of yellow ochre. I think for the majority of the scene, I'll go with yellow ochre, but I'll separate the, the slope with just a little bit of cerulean blue for the green of the grass, a little bit of cad yellow for the more orange rock and sand, and a little bit of burnt sienna for those scrubby bushes. They have a beautiful kind of warm grayish lavender tone to them. Really, looking at the scene, what's drawing me to the scene, I guess I've been craving some warmer compositions. I've been painting a lot of snow scenes lately so warm yellows and reds warm greens the higher keys are just appealing to my eyes right now so this scene immediately jumped out to me I also like the the iconic sweep of those rocks how they're all sweeping in one direction and they, they really look grand they look majestic and huge so I'm gonna try to capture that in the scene and one way is to keep the scale of this little gate down here very small. And later in the studio, I may add a person. Also, I may add a person walking on the path. We'll see how it feels, how it, how it comes out. That would also give it a sense of grandeur. After I get the turpentine wash in, I'll take a little stiffer brush, a rosemary evergreen brush, and wipe away the lightest lights in the scene. All right, there's the turpentine wash in. Now I'll put away the turpentine and get out the gamsol. Now I'll start to mix up the colors in the scene. Wind's picking up a bit, so I've anchored my easel with, a, with the backpack. Try to hold it down. All right, I've got the majority of the colors mixed up here. I've got some blues for the sky, richer, more purple for the top of the sky, a little lighter, a little more yellow toward the bottom. Those are just blends of ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and a touch of that radiant lemon. Then we've got some cloud colors here. Same colors but with a lot of white and a touch of lizard crimson added. A little more lizard crimson, a little darker, a little more of the sky color for the underside, the base of the clouds. And I've got some rock shadow colors 
there's kind of a, a deeper, darker brown, tilted just slightly warm, and a little warmer yet for the crevices. Deep in the shadows of the rocks, it gets pretty warm from the reflected light from the rock. And then a green shadow where the shrubs and grass and stuff up there goes into the shadow. Then I've got the light of the rock, a pretty grayed out tan, a little more yellow, a little more lavender, and a, a kind of a darker khaki. And those are most of the light on the rock colors. I may dip in just a little bit of white to lighten this just a touch for some of the accents. Then I've got the grassy cover colors and the scrub brush on the hills and in the foreground where that where it has that beautiful warm burnt sienna lizard and crimson combination and that's what I use to mix that color and then these are just yellow ochre and radiant lemon and a little bit of the sky color mixed in I'm trying to use as little color as I can so that I'm more likely to get a nice color harmony on the palette then I've got the pine tree colors here those are sap green ultramarine blue cad yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre let's start with a large evergreen flat for the sky dip it in just a little bit of gamsol first to loosen it up got a pretty dark coat from the turpentine wash down I can leave a lot of that and just lighten it here and there with the colors that I mixed dip in just a little bit of white to brighten it even further. Even dip into some of this slightly yellow. Just to give a little bit of harmony with the, the rock plane that I'm going to paint in. that I used to paint the clouds and paint the light on the rock. And what I'm going to do is paint this as if it was fully in sun. And I'll paint this as if it's partially in shade and in sun. As these clouds pass overhead, they're throwing some beautiful shadows on the rock face. I'll try to just capture what I'm seeing.
take the darker sky color brush and just use that. I won't even bother to clean it. I'll just use that to start painting in the shadows. There's some beautiful reflected light from the sky that's blue, especially as these clouds move in. We'll get a lot more blue reflected light from the sky off to the east. clean brush and start to paint in the grass on that background hill. I want to remember that the majority of the grassland is high value so I want to use my lighter tone first. I'll map it in completely and then I'll go back in with the darker tones and keep the whole thing higher va value. As you can see on my little side palette keeping the colors, pre-mixing the colors and keeping them separate by value is really helpful when you're trying to ma maintain that initial no tan abstract composition. Clouds are rolled in and it is getting cold. I didn't bring my coat because it was so crystal clear and sunny earlier. Now I'm starting to shiver so got to get a move on. As these clouds roll in too it's really changing the lighting and looking back behind me there's no break in the clouds oh, coming. Here earlier, the sun was coming from this direction, so the light on is on this face. The light on that face will be warmer and lighter. The light on any faces, any slopes going away will be more in shadow and bluer, cooler. without raising the value a whole lot. I can dip into this more green as well to imply some different brush up there. And then I've got my shadow green here as well where it moves into shadow.
take the smaller evergreen long flat and just dab in those pine trees. Not too worried about the drawing right now. Just really getting the composition down and capturing the color notes. I'm glad I mixed the colors earlier when the light was on the scene because everything is in shadow now. Here's where it ended up. Yeah. Got cold, but it was fun. Beautiful spot. I'll take it and I'll scrape down some of the thicker paint. That's one thing nice about painting on linen or canvas is you can scrape it off and then repaint. Take off some of those ridges. So before it fully dries, I'll scrape it down gently and then retouch it just a bit and put it out on my website. Beautiful spot, really different color harmony than what I've been painting recently. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.